What should we be paying attention to and why when it comes to this generation? Well, probably the most important thing to take notice of and, and really act on is to understand that it's a much, like as a, as a cohort or, or as a group, it's a much larger group of people than any of that's ever gone before. The population of the world is increasing, obviously, from that generation. There's just, by sheer numbers, more of them, mm -hmm. um, which obviously drives competition. I mean, there's all kinds of implications with that. Um, also, what I find is, is very, from a sociological perspective, you know, very interesting to know that the largest population growths are in emerging markets like Africa, or Nigeria, um, of course there's India and China, but then Indonesia. That's where the largest groups of young people are actually coming from. Obviously the United States is, is, is pretty large and there are areas in Europe, but not, not really a comparison to those emerging markets. So um, to say that it's a global economy, you know, obviously like we've all been talking about that for years, like more so now and in the future, the implications or the need or the opportunity to harness and, and, and build relationships with, with young people, which are the future consumers in those other markets. Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you talk about the global Gen, Gen Z market because I remember early on when people were trying to dissect Gen X and Gen Y, they were really focusing on just the U U.S. market. It was yeah. just the generation here in the U.S. because of the buying power and so forth. But it's interesting to hear you say that, you know, it's it's going to be the largest group of people that come up, not yeah. just here in the U.S., but also in other countries as well, uh, second-tier countries and third-tier countries. I, have you seen anything? What's the what's the commonalities, and what are the differentiations of of some of those groups because you know it's like the age might be the same here and in Africa and China and India but there's probably got to be a common theme and maybe there's a difference too I mean there are there are common themes I mean the the exposure to information the connectivity to everyone is so poor it's so open poor it's so connected um, it's not a direct answer but I think you'll find more and more and I know you've been seeing this too but more and more brands like don't just have to be U.S. brand to become a global brand. I, but being a, a, a power brand in the U.S. is still key, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be. I mean, look at you know the whole Carhartt thing, driving streetwear trends with work in progress. I mean, obviously that's a European you know movement. Um, so uh, the Netherlands has I think uh, Baller. I mean, there's a lot of really like powerful. This is in street culture, streetwear culture, but brands coming from different countries. Um, I think what you, you find, and I, I, don't, I think we have exposure to this, I don't think this is necessarily new, but there's, there's definitely like the local, regionalized, country-based culture and heritage that's you know, super, super key and influential, but you'll see a lot of you know, that regional stuff mattering, uh, music, fashion is easy, the easiest stuff, uh, but then you will see a lot of commonality, and I think more commonality. Yeah. But I disagree that, like with what a lot of the, the trend forecasters will, tr the trend forecasters will say it's a global brain now. Yeah, I don't believe that. I actually think that uh, uh, connectivity to your local, regional, you know, I don't know, your tribal culture, you know, your area, your region, your space uh, is, is uh, maybe, maybe more important than ever before because, you know, people want to stand for something. People want to know what they're connected to. And then when there's more people, there's more confusion, there's more choices and, you know, unique is, is also going to be like a local, and a, a hyper-local and then a regional unique. 